Nuclear energy is bound to be an important part of our energy mix going forward, so it's very important that we understand as well as we can how nuclear radiation affects materials and devices associated with the power generation industry. We're, we're working with the National Nuclear Laboratory in Cumbria to model that behaviour, and there's just some random pictures of some of the modelling that we're doing. Okay, I've spoken about this before. Our, the biggest research group is Flight Science and Technology. You might have seen these simulators here on your way in. It's one of the best simulators in the world, this thing here. This, this ball, this, this, this spherical surface is all screen. One screen. This one here has got three separate screens which give the illusion of looking out a window. This is one complete screen. You sit in it and it goes behind you and it's a, so it's, it's a perfect simulation of what it's like to fly in helicopters normally in our, in our simulator. We're an expert in that. And we have people from world navies coming in to use this simulator because it's better than they've got in their country, America included. This is one of the best simulators you can lay your hands on. So we've got a big research group supporting that, and one area they're working on is the design of new types of aircraft which better suit our flying needs. So smaller aircraft, this one is a tilt rotor. So it starts with its rotors like that, so it takes off like a helicopter, and when it's up to height, they turn like that, and it flies along like a plane. It's a civil aviation aircraft, smaller, smaller number of passengers, but more flexible and mobile. It can fly to where it needs to go. That's one area. Laser engineering, okay, most, as I've touched on before, most significant engineering developments depend on new materials and what we can do with them. The laser is a highly flexible, uh, computer-controlled energy source which allows new and fancy things to be done with new fancy materials, and I'm going to leave it at that. Blast-resistant structures. The world we live in, unfortunately, there's more and more bombs going off, terrorist attack. Bits of shrapnel fly out from the bomb. And more and more structures, not just stadia, but all sorts of structures now are dependent on cables for support. You can imagine a piece of flying shrapnel, it's a cable, it doesn't take much to either break it or make it so weak it's not doing its job anymore. And you wouldn't need to lose many cables before a structure like that stadium, which incidentally is a plan for Anfield, which has been shelved, um, but a stadium like that would collapse. So we need to understand how shrapnel breaks cables and what we can do to stop it happening. So this where it says firing test, that's our, we've got a bomb-proof chamber, a ballistics chamber in the basement of that building where we blow stuff up and fire things at things. And that allows us to collect data which allows us to generate computer models which allows us to better understand the failure and the design of cable supported structures. Impact resistant materials is another one for similar reasons. That top thing there, that mesh, it's a lightweight structure, extremely strong, made using selective laser melting. That's, it looks like just a mesh, but actually that's been designed to collapse in a certain way. So when your car bumper gets hit at the moment, it just crushes randomly. If it was made from that material, it would deform in a controlled, managed way so we'd know exactly how much energy absorption we would achieve and where the deformation would occur. This one below is laminar metal comp composites for bulletproof materials. Large structural material, I've touched on this before. New material developments, this one in the, in the construction materials, give engineers new capabilities, which means they can design new, different, more exciting structures that they couldn't, couldn't do before, only because of new materials. Again, that's another big area of ours. And this one, they're all grand challenges, right? They're important things facing the planet and everyone that lives on it. But this one shows that it's not all about the big stuff. One of my colleagues is worried about how hot cricketers' heads get. So you can see, he's used sensors to instrument up a helmet and the data collected from those to model the temperature distribution over a cricketer's head. Hot in the front, apparently. So now what he's doing is working with the helmet manufacturer to design new helmets which give a much better distribution of heat in the, in, inside and allow the cricketer to be more comfortable out in the middle. So, there's big stuff, but there's little stuff as well, just as important, but we, there's room for people to pursue their interests. Alright, I'm going to finish this section of the talk with a quote from this man. I'm sure you recognise him, Lord Mandelson, 2009. He gave a speech in which he said this. Everyone remembers him for this. We're intensely relaxed about people getting filthy rich. That's what he said. He's always quoted about for that. But in the same week, he, said, he, made, he made another speech in which he said something very important to me today. And no one ever quotes this, apart from me. So I hope you might use it in the future when you speak to people. And it's this. If you really want to change the world, choose a career in engineering. And I mean real engineering, not financial engineering. 
So this guy, the darling of the city, the man that staked so much of our country's future on the financial services industry, even he in 2009 recognised the most important people to our future are the professional engineers. The kind of people our graduates go on to become.